coming. But um, while he's coming, we want to thank God for him as he come. I believe they traveled a little distance, but God brought them here safely, him and his wife and his family. Come on, let's bring them up. This is one of our own. Amen. Pastor Hightower. Again, thank God for Bishop McCullough, amen, his cabinet, amen, and also his wife on tonight, uh, our state mother Harris, and the women's department. We thank God for this opportunity. I don't have 10 minutes, I can use it up talking a little here. <laughs> but we just thank God, amen, for this opportunity. So I thank God for my own wife. Just wave your hand back there. Amen. Thank God for her being here. Now, I don't plan to be long. Like I said, it's just 10 and maybe five cogent minutes. <laughs> but we just thank God for, again, for this opportunity uh, on tonight. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and sleepless nights. But when I look around and I think things over, uh, all of my Good days outweigh my bad days. I won't complain. Sometimes my clouds hang low. I can hardly see the road. I ask the question, Lord. so much pain but he knows what's best for me although my weary eyes can't see oh, so I'll say thank you Lord thank you Lord I, I won't complain He's been so good to me More than this whole world could ever be He's been good to me From the word of God just briefly The book of Deuteronomy, the first chapter and The sixth verse Deuteronomy, the first chapter, six verses, says, The Lord our God spake unto us in Herod, saying, You have dwelled long enough in this mount. Turn ye, take your journey. Just briefly, look at your neighbor and say, Long enough. Amen. Long enough enough amen we are creatures of habits amen we get into a routine of doing things amen and no doubt a lot of us in here couldn't wake up this morning without that coffee y'all ain't gonna talk to me amen when we leave church we got, got our own certain route we go every time we don't deviate I heard him talking earlier about sitting in that seat. Amen. I got to have my seat. I, I don't want to change. It's something, amen, about that seat. Amen. We, we come to church, amen, and we give God the same old praise. 
Amen. And we expect to get a different results. Amen. But I just come tonight to tell you briefly, you've been where you are long enough. Amen. Eleven days turned into 40 years. Amen. They should have been to the promised land, but amen. Procrastination. Amen. I, I, I want to hold on to the things that I used to do. I used to, this the way mama did it. This the way daddy did it. Amen. I'm not going to hold on and stay where I am because I don't know nothing else. I just got to stay here. But I just want to submit to you tonight, you've been where you are long enough. It's time for us, amen, to come out of our comfort zone. Go into a land that you know not of. Amen. The children of Israel had gotten to a place of complacency, hanging around the mountain. Amen. But it was time that they need to branch out from around the mountain. And I want to let you know tonight, you need to come out of your place of complacency, amen, and lunch out into the deep. You've been where you are long enough. Thank you, Lord. As I hurry to a close, they had to go into a land that they didn't know anything about. Sometimes you are where you are because you're stuck in a certain position. And you don't want to go where God wants you to go. You're stuck right there. You say, God, I don't want to move. But the Lord trying to get a blessing to you. And we're stuck in our corner. And we don't want to move. But I've been where? I am long enough. Thank you, Jesus. I'm finna close here. I got to give you part two another time. Thank you, Lord. Look at the neighbors and neighbor. You need to come out of your rut. Come out of that rut. Go to a place where God can use you. Can I tell my story here? As I go to my sea, there was a story of an eagle bird. And the eagle bird was captured and chained in captivity. And they chained him to a rock. And that little eagle bird, he tried to fly. But the chain pulled him back down. Every time he tried to fly, the chain pulled him down. So he started walking around the rock. The wind came. The water came. He's still walking around that rock until he walked a rut around that rock. Look at your neighbors and neighbor. Come out of that rut. Come out of that rut. It's time. It's time to step out. It's time to go higher.
good and they singing good. Can we thank God for them? Amen. Thank you for blessing us. Let's thank God for the musicians as well. Thank praise. And, uh, we want to also honor um, the arrival of Bishop's um, executive staff, uh, Bishop O.C. Tatum. We thank God for him. And Administrative Assistant Johnson. Administrative Injustice Davis Stokes. And then our supervisor has made her arrival. Praise God for, for her. And can we thank God for Prentice Mother McClellan. Amen. Amen. Look at so beautiful. God bless you, Mother Tatum. Amen. And all of these wonderful women of God, our missionary Hackney that blessed us at the prayer breakfast for the word that she shared with us. And all these supervisors, and even the pastors that are here, pastors and elders, we praise God for you. And we give God all of the glory for what he is doing. Um, tonight, we, um, it's, it's the bishop's desire to acknowledge and uh, welcome district officials. And tonight, we have three of them here on tonight, and we're going to um, give them space at this time. We want them to come in this order. Um, Bethel District, um, the one and only Superintendent Vernon Crawley. Amen. It's all right. Amen. You can, you can celebrate them as, as we call their name. District Missionary Lois Suggs is a district missionary. Amen. And then we're going to J Bass District. Um, Superintendent David Stokes. And District Missionary Cecilia Young. Prayer Warrior. All the way to Canaan District. Superintendent Robert White. That's all right. That's right. Celebrate them. And then our district missionary, Daisy Burton. They're going to come in that order. So as you continue to clap, let's bring them up, all of them. We greet you, my lovely wife, Sister Elisa Crawley. Our anointed district missionary has already been acknowledged. We're in for a great time and a great move of God. God bless you. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. How many have a praise for the Lord tonight? We welcome you, the Jabez District, I let my um, district missionary supervisor Cecilia Young stand. I know she taught tonight and we talked about her uh, representing and having some words, but she gave me the signal she's talked out. So just give her an ovation, would you please? We honor and praise God for the addition of Mother Young to our district because it's a tremendous blessing to have someone of her caliber. We're grateful today. This is the day the Lord has made. I don't know about you, but I'm going to rejoice in it. I'm going to be glad in it. How many know that you have everlasting life? Yes, Jesus made it very clear that that's the prize for the saints. In fact, he said so much about our opportunities to be rewarded that he said you would not even have to be judged, but that once you had faith in him and that who sent him, his father who sent him, that everlasting life was yours automatically. Isn't that something? That just simply means that our ministry work is a uh, possession of reward. And so many of the things that we're doing now, even your being here tonight, even your heeding the call of our bishop, to be at this 76 ministers and workers meeting. What a blessing. Give yourselves a hand praise. I want to thank God for the churches of the Jabez district. And we do have some candidates and some new churches. I'm not going to mention, uh, but one of the pastors is here tonight. We're growing. In fact, we have two churches. And uh, because they're not uh, Kojic churches, we're just going to slow walk that. But I want you to know that God is growing the Jabez district. Come on, give us a hand.
God been good to anybody? If you've done something for you, why don't you praise him? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Thank you. Hallelujah. We honor the Lord tonight for his goodness. Thank God for salvation. Thank God for my wife on tonight. I thank my district missionaries here. I'm not sure. But we thank God for our district missionary and want to give honor to the pastors out here. Can the pastors of Canaan stand up if you're here tonight? Amen. Thank God for our chairman, Walker. Amen. Our pastor, Robinson, on tonight. We honor our bishop. Praise God. I thank God for our bishop, Tatum, tonight. for the executive men on tonight. Amen. We honor our own prelate. Amen. Wisconsin Northwest. God is certainly good. I said the Lord is good. Amen. And he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Got up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Amen. And he's kept me all day. No evil have I done. Honor the first lady, the fragrance of the jurisdiction. And our state supervisor. Amen. Thank God for her on this evening. Praise God. Amen. Well, amen. Uh, he got so many titles. I just call him president. <laughs> Praise God. We just thank God for David W. Stokes on today. Thank God for all of the saints of God. Amen. On today. God is just doing wonderful things. Amen. And I don't know, God is still in the blessing business. I say he's yet in the blessing business. You hear in the saints where you go sometimes, people say God ain't doing what he used to. Yes, he is. He's still doing what he used to. Now, if he's not doing it around you, I was reading a book today that said get around people going places. Amen. And you'll see the wonders of God. Amen. I want you to pray for the Canaan district. God is certainly blessing us, amen, to go higher. Amen. We just thank God, amen, for that on tonight. I want you to pray for us. I did give honor to my wife. I know I did. I could, couldn't forget. I want to say this, and I'm going to sit down. An old lady told me some years ago in Memphis. She called me up, didn't know me from Adam. She said, son, said, wherever you go, honor your wife. And said, God will delight in you. And so I thank God I try to keep hold to that. Amen. Mother writes here, she's my, she's my uh, district missionary sister. We, can you just get up and greet the people? Please, you do that in place of Mother uh, uh, Missionary Burden. She's not here tonight. Just get up and say hello, and we're going to take our seat. God bless you.
If it's my head, if it's my heart, all right, 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 he lay. Yes, he did. He lay. He lay. Did he lay his hands on you? Thank you, Lord. 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 Bless your name. Bless your name. Well, come on and praise him right there. Come on and praise him right there. Just go ahead and give them some praise. Clap those hands. Do your dance. Shout hallelujah. There's some praises in the house. be able to do it like him because you may not be able to touch like he did but just hug yourself and say I know he got his hands on me you may not be able to do it like that but just hug yourself and say he got his hands on me oh. Hallelujah. thank you oh there's an anointing in this place an anointing in here. I need everybody to stand. Oh, hallelujah. Our leader is here and he wants to come. We thank God for a leader that loved the Lord. And we thank God for a leader that loved God's people. 
Amen. Was able, been able to travel with him, and I um, said it in his presence and in his absence that Bishop is definitely one of the leaders that can tell anybody follow him home, and when they get here, they'll see what God is doing. Great things God is doing in Wisconsin Northwest under his leadership. Come on, keep clapping as our leader comes, Bishop. C.H. McClellan, general board member. Come on, give it to him. Come on, give it to him. Lord, hallelujah. Everybody celebrate the Lord right there. Come on, turn up the volume on your praise. Glory, hallelujah. Come on, raise the praise and give God the glory. All the glory. All the honor. All the praise. It all belongs to you. Anybody feel like I feel? Come on, clap your hands and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're so very blessed tonight to be in the house of God and to be among the people of God. Our inheritance is among them that are sanctified because I'm one of them today. And I want to celebrate the goodness of God. Um, David said that I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He's a God of good things. And the word says no good thing will he withhold from them that what? Walk uprightly. So if you love God, he's got great things in store for you. Help me tell somebody, greater is coming your way. Greater, greater. So based upon that thought, our theme for this week is reaching beyond the limits. Actually, it's for the year. Everybody say these words after me. Reaching beyond the limits. Believing God for more. Don't settle for less. In other words, God, God's got something greater in store for you. So I'm reaching beyond the limits. Talk back to me, somebody. Tell them to reach beyond the limits. And believe God for more. He's able to do exceeding abundantly. You know what it said. Above all that we ask or think. I'm very thankful tonight to be with the people of God. And let me acknowledge all of our wonderful uh, pastors and elders. Uh, to our Bishop O.C. Tatum, Jr. To our associate. Hold that applause for a minute. Let me run. Let me run the list a bit to our Associate Justice, Pastor Dr. David W. Stokes, Administrative Assistant, Pastor Robert Johnson, Administrative Assistant, uh, Pastor Dr. Stephen Collins Tipton, El Bethel, and Chairman of Aang. To the other superintendents that are here, Superintendent Crawley, and our Chairman of our Council, to our Evangelist President, our Youth Department President, and to all these wonderful pastors. God bless you, uh, son. I didn't know you. You had a, got a new haircut on me, but bless you. That's good. <laughs> Brother Ella Carter, he changed his hair on me. All right. To all of the lovely ladies of the Lord, to the bestest wife in the whole round world, Lady Clintus McCullough. Uh, Saint Ed Evangelist Supervisor, Mother Grace Davis Harris. Chairperson of the Department of Women, Evangelist Hackney. And Lady Tatum, and to all these wonderful ladies of the Lord, can I say all to all of the saints of God, thank God I'm saved. Yeah, and I feel him right about now. And that's why I'm going to try to control myself. We're so favored tonight to be in the house of God, but the, the greatest honor we have is that we're in his presence. That's what the psalmist says, in his presence there is fullness of joy. And then the Bible says, the upright shall dwell in his presence. When I saw a daughter over there, sanctified two-step with that brother right behind her, I said, I'm in the right house tonight. And I looked around and praised as calmly for the upright. Why don't you tell somebody, I got a right to give God praise. Because I don't look like what I've been through. But he brought me out. Anybody know he brought you out? Why don't you tell somebody, I made it out all right. What the devil meant for evil, God meant it for good. I made it out all right. And I got to praise and I got to get it out. Somebody help me shout hallelujah. Hey. Hey. I, I wore the right shoes tonight. Prophet, Prophet Spire, I got the right shoes on tonight, man. Don't fool with me. Shout on you. 
right about now. We're blessed tonight to have with us, in my opinion, and so many others, one of the premier preachers of the Church of God in Christ. He's an icon, the one and only Bishop Roger L. Jones. Help me celebrate him right now. Holy Cathedral, let's thank God for our special, he's not just a guest, he's part of us. Thank God for Bishop Roger Jones. He wrote an awesome book, and I bought a bunch of them and gave some of them away. And his subject on the book is, I Walked With the Fathers. Here's a man that spent time around Bishop C.H. Mason, the founder. Spent time around uh, Bishop O.T. Jones, Sr., who followed Bishop Mason. And all of the following presiding bishops of our great church, uh, he was there. And a lot of that rubbed off on him. And that's why I hang around him. Maybe some of the rub off on me. It matters who you hang with, y'all. Ask your neighbor who you hanging with, who you hanging with. You know, you can't so like an eagle hanging with turkeys. Ask your neighbor who you hanging with, who you hanging with. Look at how y'all looking at me. So tonight, you don't want to leave this house. You want to. You want to be here to hear the conclusion of the whole matter. May I make just these brief observations? Because we want to get the preacher up real soon. Uh, tomorrow evening, tomorrow morning, in fact, Bishop Roger Jones will be with us again. And he will be sharing with us from the word of the Lord. Uh, you do yourself a favor to rearrange your schedule to be here tomorrow, 9 o'clock prayer. Thank you, prayer warriors. 10 o'clock, he'll be up sharing. And then, uh, of course, Tomorrow evening, we'll be here again. Uh, another inspirational message by one of our fine young preachers. Uh, his name is in the program, Overseer Jerome Johnson. And then, of course, we also have with us uh, the one and only Bishop O.C. Tatum, Jr. And uh, you all know him. Anybody know Bishop O.C. Tatum? Yeah. He did something that's kind of a novelty in the Church of God in Christ. He uh, allowed his son to pick up the reins, and I appointed his son, Pastor Sean Kelly, who celebrated six years on this past weekend as pastor. Stand up, Pastor Sean, evangelist president. Yeah. Great preacher, singer, musician, and he has a lovely wife by his side. Uh, tonight, we are very thankful for all of these department leaders and the lovely ladies that uh, work with them. These are these are hard-working ladies, and, um, and they do it with a cheerful spirit. That means everything, saints. I don't want anybody to give me a cup of water, and they frowning. I don't know what you did to that water. Yeah, hello. And so <laughs> we celebrate all of these who serve the Lord's work with a spirit of humility and excitement. I caught the message, Dr. B uh, Pastor Hightower. Uh, yeah, I got it. Thank you, sir. Long enough. You ought to be saved long enough to have a Popeye moment. I done stands all I can stand, and I can't stand no more. Can I get a witness in this house? And not taking anything off the devil, but giving God all the glory, honor, and the praise. So you want to stick with us this week? Friday night, of course, is always a Friday, in fact, all day celebration because we have one of, the, one of the best, and to me, the bestest supervisor in the whole round world. So sometimes when I get ready to bring up, I say, you know my name. There's a story behind that. I don't have time to tell you about it. But she'll be speaking Friday uh, evening for our service. Thank you, musicians. And so tonight, as we prepare our hearts to move further, I just want to praise God for you because, uh, because of you, I am. And uh, you remain in our prayers, Lady McClellan and I, all of the time. I've only been saved for 54 years and pastor in almost 42 years. I have the marks to prove it. Yeah, some of y'all get that later. 
But I want to thank God because if the Lord will and if the Lord, old folks, if the Lord hope me, uh, we'll be celebrating 50 years July 13th. Now, I'm going to be transparent. I ain't going to try to fake it till I make it. You know, you got some preachers get up and call their wife. She's the delicious. She's the chocolate on my ice cream. And she's the sugar in my coffee. And before they get back home, they fighting like cats and dogs, arguing like fools and me. Would you ask your neighbor, is he talking about anybody you might know? Regardless of how upset my wife made me, uh, Lady Clemens, I, I come back home. And I get in the bed with her. That's right. Yeah. It may take me a minute to cool off, but I'm going to stay in my house. I ain't going nowhere. Sound check. Some of y'all make out like his wife. Just one way. That woman, that woman, that woman. Sometimes you won't tell the truth on yourself. You need to tell your truth, the truth on yourself even if it makes you feel bad. Okay, I'm getting a cool spirit. I feel a brick spirit coming. I'm going to close this sermon. So Pastor Tipton is coming back, but I'm going to be back to try to give a, 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 a decent introduction to this wonderful man of God. Thank God for him. We thank God for his lovely wife. She's not here tonight, but we appreciate her. She serves on our trustee board of Church of God in Christ. So tonight, here's what I want you to do. You ever, you ever have an anticipation of something? Any, anybody know about December 25th? See, we blame the children, but some of us can't wait till 20, the morning of December 25th. On December 24th, we peeping at the tree and looking under the tree. It's an anticipation of what you're going to get. I want you to anticipate what God is about to do in his house. He's about to release a blessing upon you that will last you a lifetime. So in anticipation of what God is about to do, I want you to celebrate it right about now. And give God glory. Give God praise. If you know God's coming your way, if you know a blessing is about to drop on you, act like you know it and open your mouth and clap your hands and give God glory. Get excited about what God is about to do. That's what I'm talking about. And you know, he inhabits the praises. So when he hear hallelujah over here, thank you Jesus over there, yes Lord right here, you know what God said? They want me to come in here. And when you go to give God serious total praise, he'll move in your direction. He'll work in your favor. He'll turn some stuff around. All right, all right. God knows that we're ready to receive tonight. Remember, on tomorrow evening, we want to have a celebration of pastoral leadership, hospitality, uh, pastors, aides, presidents. I want you to get ready. Even now, I'm sure some of you, are, most of you are already ready to just express kindness to your servant-hearted leader, your pastor. You cannot do enough for him because he's the one that prays for God to give him a word for you. And just like you heard tonight from Pastor Hightower, standing up preaching to people, 52 Sundays out of a year and sometimes weeknights and, and, and doing everything else that he does, he needs prayer. Pastors need prayer. And you can't love him and not love his wife. Don't be grinning at him and then look at his wife and tell him, hmm. Yeah, we're going, hmm, you. Yeah. They are packaged. They come together. Talk back to me somebody. When he hurts, she hurts. Yeah. Sometimes my wife, she knows something going on. She just rub my old head and say, it's going to be all right. And I go to sleep right quick. <laughs> Everybody needs somebody to encourage them. Did I get that right? So don't forget tomorrow night, let's be ready to celebrate our pastors in a very tangible way. Thank you, Dr. Tipton. Celebrate Pastor Tipton doing a great job at the El Bethel. Church of God in Christ. Thank you, Supervisor Young. Thank you, Dr. Tipton. Yeah, helping us to get rid of some stress. 
I know somebody said I'm too blessed to be stressed. I ain't calling no names. I said I'm blessed in spite of the stress. Amen, somebody? So tomorrow evening, come back as these young men stand up over here at Jerome. And where's the other brother at? Where's that? Stand up, there they are. They're going to be talking tomorrow night on men's ministry. Amen. Everybody said men's ministry. Yeah. Every sister ought to be clapping their hands for men. They had something to do with you getting here. Thank God for the men. Thank you, Dr. Tipton. Bless you, brothers. Praise God. Let's praise God for our leader. And we thank God for, for Bishop McClough. Amen. For all, all that he is doing. The word of God is coming shortly, but this is the time now that we um, help uh, our leader in the, um, the offering and the expense of our meeting. And we do not want to leave anything on our leader. We don't want to leave anything on the jurisdiction. And so God has blessed you to be a blessing. Amen. I, I say that again. God has blessed you to be a blessing. Uh, not for you to accumulate more stuff, but that you can be a blessing for kingdom building. Of souls to be saved. How many of you love people to get saved? How many of you want to see people to get saved and delivered? Amen. Um, that's what um, God has called us to do. Not just to come together to look at what each other have on, but that somebody in the midst of this need a word from the Lord um, and they need the prayer of deliverance. You don't know what they're going home to, but our coming together can change that situation. And so I'm going to ask that um, you give, and I want all of us to do this um, because we want to definitely um, help with the budget of the meeting and what God is going to do for the rest of the meeting. So I'm going to ask you all in the audience to give a $25 gift. I want you to get a $25 gift. Um, if you don't have that, um, ask your neighbor, let me hold some until tax season. <laughs> Go ahead, ask them. Let me... Let me Tell them tax season is, look at somebody. <laughs> Mother Harris, let me hold something until tax season. Yes, uh, get it in your hand. I want all the, um, the pastors, I want you all to help me in one or two ways. I'll, either $50 or $100. I'm going to give 125 towards this offering. Um, I see... Bishop is, is giving 200. Um, I want you, uh, pastors, leaders, um, AIM presidents, and, and elected ladies, I want you all to. Um, all right, thank you. Um, just as our speaker is giving 100, and our Pastor Stokes is giving. bless you. Thank you for joining us in our 76th annual Ministers and Workers Movement, where our Bishop C.H. McCullough is the prelate and the general board member. Good evening and God bless you. Thank you for joining us in our 76th annual Ministers and Workers Meeting, where our Bishop C.H. McClellan is the prelate and the general board member. We've come to that time in the service where it is time to offer up our sacrificial gifts. Those of you that are joining us online, you have the opportunity to participate in this giving by giving via Givelify. You can find us on Givelify by searching Wisconsin Northwest Jurisdiction, and on the landing page, you will see our Bishop C.H. McClellan. Go ahead and select your gift, select the envelope, and we thank you for your continuous support of the jurisdiction and of the Lord's Church. We continuously pray that God continues to increase you in your sacrificial giving. You don't want to miss our weeknight services. On Wednesday evening, we'll be hearing from our very own Bishop Roger Jones, the Vice Chairman of the Board of Bishops. On Thursday night, we'll hear from Milwaukee's own Bishop O.C. Tatum, the Administrative Assistant for Wisconsin Northwest Jurisdiction. 
And on Friday, we'll be hearing from our sainted mother, Supervisor Grace Davis Harris, as she provides an inspiring and anointed word. On Saturday, the youth are convening at El Bethel Church of God in Christ on 5401 West Good Hope Road. That event begins at 12 noon. You come and join us at that event as the young people go forth in the Lord. And official day, the high point of our service. That will be held Sunday, March 24th, 6 p.m. at Mason Temple Church of God in Christ, 6098 North 35th Street. Come on out and hear the official day message from our Bishop C.H. McClellan, the Prelate and General Board Member. We look forward to seeing you in the services, and may God continuously bless you. And again, thank you in this time of giving. We appreciate every gift that has been sown. Uh, again, you can give via Givelify. You can find us on Givelify by searching Wisconsin Northwest Jurisdiction. Thank you, and God bless you. to say stop we have met our goal thank you right now for all of the blessings and we're going to praise you in jesus name amen the urshers are going to direct you we're coming from the direction of the urshers come on um all over amen thank you our inspirational speaker uh fifty dollars preachers if you want me to acknowledge the mothers we'd be glad to do so come starting from the rear even the overflow overflow is giving Overflow, the choir is giving. Thank you. My beautiful wife, Dr. Tipton, given $100. She's beautiful and a giver. Thank you. Amen. All right. Our attorney for the Church of God in Christ, Attorney Sappho, thank you for $100. Thank you. They're coming. These pastors are giving. Thank you. You're so kind. You're so kind. Thank you. God bless you. Prophet Spivey. Good to see you. Miracle. Told the doctor what he ain't going to do. God brought him out. Hallelujah. The superintendents are giving. Hallelujah. Thank you. Superintendent White, $100. You're so kind. You're so kind. Preachers. Amen. Praise God. We give God glory. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Our first ladies are giving. Y'all so kind. You're so kind. They're giving. Oh, my God. Yes. I believe they also have the credit card. Uh, Executive Secretary is over in the corner. If you want to give by a debit or credit card, he's available. Or you believe Givelify, Wisconsin, Wisconsin Northwest. Givelify, Wisconsin Northwest. You can give it that way as well. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone had the opportunity to give. Now do me a favor. Give yourselves a hand for your kindness. Wisconsin Northwest, you are the best. You are the best. Our um, executive secretary, one of the best you'll ever find. Amen. A kind uh, man, and look like he got some um, treats in the back. Uh, we thank God for it. It's not peach cobbler, but we'll settle for whatever he he done, and we'll. We, 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 we'll, we thank God for him. He's going to come with some information that we need to know. And then um, the president of our um, youth department has an announcement that he's going to share. We thank God for all of our AIM leaders who have the missions president. I've seen him in the audience um, somewhere he might have left. But all of the guys, we praise God for our music president as well. And she's doing a wonderful job. <laughs> Amen. Sunday school uh, did a wonderful job and all of these great women that work with them let's receive our executive secretary and then our fellow boy just coming up thank 
bless you. Good evening. Peace be unto the saints. It's good to be in a jurisdiction that has peace. Amen. Amen. I am going to look up to the sky because I don't want to look anyone in the face. But I've seen some yawns, Bishop. And I just want to say that if you want to get your out the rut, like Pastor Hightower says, if you need some help, we have some coffee in the executive suite <laughs> with some pastries because we want to be awake when this word comes. Amen? Amen. And yes, Pastor Tipton, while you're back there, um, delighting in the cookies and the donuts and the brownies and the everything else, we are receiving our jurisdictional reports, both national reports, uh, church reports, and official offerings. Um, we are back there and we are receiving them uh, this evening, tomorrow evening, uh, Friday evening, Saturday, Sunday, amen. Uh, we are here for you. So please make sure that you turn in your reports as soon as possible. Is that all right? This, is, uh, this next message is for those individuals that are delegates to the upcoming April call session. If you are a delegate, whether you are a credential delegate as a pastor and elder, whether you are a lay delegate or a district missionary or a bishop or a bishop wife, if you are a delegate, you must register by this Friday uh, by 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. There are no exceptions. They will not open that portal back up. So whether you plan on attending in person or if you plan on attending virtually, again, you must register on the ARC system by this Friday at 11.59 p.m. Amen. Uh, Bishop, I was in the store the other day and I was paying for some goods and I forgot my wallet. And I was about to be embarrassed. But I remembered that I had my uh, credit card on my phone. Amen. This jurisdiction makes our credential reports electronically. And those jurisdictions that make their reports electronically, the, de the credential holders will receive their credential card electronically. I thought I'd hear at least an amen or something. As many people said they did not get their cards, you will both get a physical card and you will get your card electronically. That way you will always have it with you. Thank you. There you go. There you go. <laughs> amen. So please be on the lookout. We'll provide you with more information. But the Church of God in Christ is moving forward. We're going to have digital credential cards. Amen. Uh, this Saturday, the youth explosion begins at 10 a.m. at El Bethel, Church of God in Christ, 5401 West Good Hope Road. Amen. Where our youth president, amen, Elder uh, Boyd, will be going forth along with the youth. Please, pastors, first ladies, youth leaders, send the young people out to this session. Amen. Please send your young people to this session. We want to engage with the young people. That is this Saturday, 10 a.m. at El Bethel. And then our official day service will be this Sunday, 6 p.m., Mason Temple. And we will be hearing from the greatest bishop on this side of heaven, the Honorable Bishop C.H. McClellan, prelate and general board member. He is going to provide a Rima word. You don't want to miss it. Make sure that you are in the place. God bless you. Good evening, Saints. I got some help with me. We have two very important announcements this evening on behalf of the Jurisdictional Youth Department. But the first announcement, I'm going to have the youth actually give it to you, and then I'll give you guys the second announcement. dinner plans tomorrow and Friday. Look no further than tomorrow night. The youth department will be selling dinners where you can come and enjoy a mouth water loaded baked potato. The Amen Chef and Chef Kisses and also Chef Milan, you, you, they will be serving. You will be able to get the choices like chicken, beef, or shrimp and more toppings of your choice. You will want to come back again and again. Somebody say Friday. 
On Friday night, we will be selling catfish dinners with spaghetti and coleslaw. So you don't want to forget your money on those two nights. Support our youth. Amen? Amen. 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 Can we get a youth a hand? These are our youth. They will be doing the cooking. So I just want y'all to know this is not coming from us. The youth will be doing the cooking and they're raising funds for the youth department. Can I have everyone that was here last year that took the trip to AIM with us? Please stand. Anyone that took the trip to AIM to us, please stand. Mothers, don't be ashamed. Y'all was on the bus with us. Y'all can stand as well. We had an amazing time last year. We are going again this year. We have a bus. We're getting our rooms. Please register your youth. See myself or tell Lady Tucker at some point this evening, tomorrow evening, Saturday, Sunday, whenever you want. Give me a call. We're going to sign you up to get you on this bus. You got to do it quick, though, because people heard about the time we had. So they already calling us. So make sure you don't miss your spot on this bus because we're heading to AIM in uh, St. Louis this year. Amen. Thank you, Elder Robert Boyd, and he has his own ministry that he started some years ago called Bros, Brothers Rising Over Our Streets. I think they begin at the age of 10 and they go up, and he's doing a fabulous job working with our young people. Uh, he's got a, a real chef in his house, and how old is the chef? 11 years old, and she was featured on uh, one of the major NBC affiliates in the kitchen and make it, and you know what? I went by and, and was selling dinners, my wife and I, we went by and bought them, and I wanna tell you, it was, it was worth eating. 11 years old, she had a chef hat on, she was in the kitchen making that mac and cheese and yams, and I mean, the whole thing was mm, good. 11 years old, celebrate Ella Boyd. We're praying for him on this Friday as he eulogizes one of his nephews. How old was he? 25 years old, and it uh, sounded like it was a hit, but uh, we're going to pray that God give him grace as he does the eulogy for that service. Uh, yeah, you know, these streets are filled with violence, and it's, if it, there ever was such a thing as a really good time to be saved, it's now. Because the devil is as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Bishop Roger L. Drum. He has been a lifelong member of the Grand Old Church of God in Christ, a product of Saints Industrial uh, College there in Lexington, Mississippi. He drove Bishop Mason around, and he was there for all of these wonderful presiding bishops that we have. And he has come through the challenges of life, and God has used that experience to catapult him up to another level. When you hear Bishop Roger Jones, he's not just preaching about only what he heard. He can tell you about what he knows and what he has experienced. Serves our great church as the chairman of the trustee board for 26 years. And he has been in this pulpit before. It was some years ago, but he came and he it just uh, preached us happy and then happy. And tonight we are honored that he would pull away from his ministry, his jurisdiction, Greater Holy Temple Ministries. He serves the Board of Bishops of the Church of God in Christ worldwide as the first vice chairman of the Board of Bishops. He is a scholar of a preacher. One of his sons that was a dear friend to me and this ministry, the late great Bishop Derek W. Hutchins. He served him as pastor. And so he has many sons and daughters across the width and breadth of this country. But tonight he's in this house. And God has put a word in his mouth for this moment. And as we pray for him and lend him our amens, I believe God has a rima with your name on it. And we're going to receive that word. Choir is coming now to share his selection. Uh, this wonderful book that he has, you want to get it. I Walk With the Fathers. It will bless you. It's a piece of history that you need in your library. Everybody needs it. Uh, he has a young man that's with him tonight, 
and he will have those books. You'll be able to get them uh, probably somewhere near and dear, maybe in the overflow. We'll have Elder Gregory Robinson, the Apostolic Aid, to assist to get him there so you'll have easy access to get these books. But I promise you, these, this book will bless you, and it'll be something you'll treasure for the rest of your life. After the choir, we'll rise and receive the Honorable Bishop Roger L. Jones.
hearts are restless until we find our own in thee. It is in thee that we live, we move, we have our being, and besides you there is no other. You are our strength. All over this city, the hospitals, the intensive care units, people are struggling for their lives. But I want to thank you that you blessed us and we want to raise our hands and tell you thank you. Thank you. Look where you brought us from and Look where you're carrying us to. We, we just want to thank you. Raise your hands and be healed. We proclaim, we declare that you are healed now. And we give you the glory. Bless this servant whom you have placed here. Thank you for his commitment, his life, his faithfulness in his family, his wife, and all of the members of this jurisdiction. Bless us in the mighty name of Jesus and the people said amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I am so thankful tonight to be here with my friend. I want to pay tribute to this. He does not call himself a pioneer, but he is. He has been faithful to our church, and God has tremendously blessed him and his ministry. We esteem him. We, we honor him and we pray for him that God will continue to bless him. Thank you so much, Bishop McClellan, for having me to come to be a part of this wonderful workers meeting. God bless uh, Bishop Tate. Tate. Tatum, right, Bishop Tatum. God bless you, been known him for many, many years, and we're so thankful to see you. Also, our chief counsel. I started to say Pastor Sappho, but I. <laughs> this is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a fantastic young person. Love him to death. He has made such a tremendous difference in our legal uh, service for the Church of God in Christ, and we are so thankful to have us. Then you have a Chief Justice here today, tonight. Uh, Bishop Stokes, and God bless him, and all of the pastors and superintendents and all of you who are here. God bless our First Lady McClellan. And Bishop knows this. I call her my sister. Just a mild person, love the Lord. She is distinctive and distinguished, and we honor you. Brother Davis. God bless you. You have played such a tremendous role in our church and all of the people of the Lord. Before I even begin the message, why don't you just stand and celebrate our leader, Bishop Charles McClellan. Let's, let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him. Let's, let's celebrate our... our leader. We will also thank uh, Elder Eicherberger for bringing me here over evangelist department. Stand up. God bless you. So happy to 
have you to share with us. I come here with a lot of nostalgia. I want to give you a brief story about Wisconsin. Dr. King says we are not makers of history, we are made by history. And in a generation that ignores his history has no past, let alone no future. In 1914, Overseer G.R. Anderson came to Milwaukee, the first overseer in the state of Wisconsin. He stayed here for a while and something catastrophic happened and Bishop Mason had to move him to another city. He moved him to New York and over the years something happened in New York. And Bishop Mason called Bishop Warman Wells and said, I have J.R. Anderson here. Do you have a church that you can give him? And uh, Bishop Wells said, yes, I got a church in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Um, send me his information and I'll, I'll help him to come from New York to North Carolina. He came there in 1948. I was 10 years old. First overseer of Wisconsin. If Bishop Mason had not been a father and willing to give him an opportunity to move from one place to the other until he got it right. I was 10 years old. If Bishop Mason had not moved him from here and he went to New York and they moved him to North Carolina, possibly I would not have been saved, would not have been a preacher, would not have been a servant in the church. But because of the patriarch of Bishop C.H. Mason, he touched and impacted my life. Look at somebody and say, don't give up on people too soon. <laughs> Paul gave up on John Mark. Mark went with him to the first missionary journey and the second one, he did not take him with him. Had it been left up to Paul, we probably would not have a St. Mark or a book of St. Mark. And so I'm so thankful. Please bear with me. I'm 86. And this is my 50th year of pastor, 60 years of pastoring a church. And 39 years of being a bishop in Koji. I want to just share with you briefly. Look like I broke part of the glasses here, but I, I work with it. <laughs> they say age is a number, no age is a fact. <laughs> And you know, I'm just so happy to be home. Yes, sir. Prayerfully, as we read from St. Mark 5, we speak as a renewed sense of dedication and rekindled compassion for others and a new commitment to the cause and challenges of Christ as he has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. I want to read from just Mark 1, just a few verses of that. Mark 1 and Mark 5, I should say, and 1, through maybe verses 6 or 7. 
You may stand, if you please, for the reading of the word. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Galileans. And when he was come out of the ship immediately, there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him, no man could tame him, not with chains because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him, and always night and day, he was in the mountains, in the tombs, crying, cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar, he ran and worshiped him, and he said unto him with a loud voice, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thy son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thy talk meant me not. And he said unto him, Come out of the man, thy unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion for we are many. You may be seated. Bishop Gilbert E. Patterson used to come over the television station, Word Network, and his theme was be healed, be delivered, and be set free. I want to just piggyback on that, piggyback on that uh, thing that he used. Jesus describes a man in the cemetery with an unclean spirit who had, had legions of many for many years. And at that time, my sisters and brothers, Legions consisted from 4,000 to 6,000 demons. Can you imagine and contemplate that one person can be a carrier of four up to 6,000 demons? This seemed, seemed very unreal to us who who live in a so-called modern civilization. Some Bible teachers believe that demon possession is becoming even more prevalent in today's modern society. We see in this scene three different forces at work, Satan, society, and the Savior. When we read this passage, we are tempted to dismiss it as having really little to do with modern society. It seemed to be remote to a remote area and uh, some simple primitive age. Jesus, Jesus speaks about the authority of the church in Matthew 10. And when he had called his disciples, his 12 disciples unto him, he gave them power over unclean spirits yes, to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and uh, disease. One of the greatest problems in any age is how do you control the wild element in man's nature? The wild element tends to defile, control, and try to express itself in contempt for law and order. The wild element expresses itself in wars, hot wars, and, and cold wars, mass hysteria, uh, massive violence, and waves of parental and juvenile delinquency, and waves of crime and violence. We can understand a storm on the sea, but who can con contemplate a storm in a man? This man had 
the storm and on inside of him, the force, the velocity of the velocity of, of, of a storm within a man. I'm going to settle down. This is a remarkable, incredible story. It has all of the elements of tragedy, violence, and intrigue. This is a song about a man who was stripped by a demon, an unclean spirit that robbed him of his dignity, his integrity, and his identity. Somebody said, praise the Lord. This man had an unclean spirit. He ignored the voice of God, therefore his desires and energies and synergies were usurped and squandered by forces that he could not control. We're not told how the unclean spirit or demons enter into this man and took control, but possibly it was the result of him yielding to sin. Demons are unclean spirits and can easily get a foothold in the lives of people who controvert, uh, people who somehow do not understand how they do, how they work, if sent for practices. The word unclean is the same word used to denote certain creatures which the Israelites was not, was not familiar, was, was forbidden to eat, forbidden to eat. The, the pig was one of those unclean creatures. According to the New Testament, uh, the law was that you could not even eat pork or touch a hog. Now, I'm not saying that, that, that eating pork is a sin. If so, I need to repent at the altar today. But. <laughs> But just as the Israelites zealously protected themselves from being in contact with pigs, Christians are to guide themselves and guard themselves from being in contact with evil spirits. What would you do if a herd of 50 pigs came into your home and began to make themselves at home? Would you invite such a thing? Would you pay them no attention in hope that they would soon leave on their own accord? Would you try to clean up the mess that they have made? You would not do any of these things. You would drive them out as quickly as possible. This is to be our attitude toward demon spirits. As soon as they are discovered, we are to cast them out. Remember now, and when he had called unto him his disciples, he gave them power to cast out unclean spirits and to heal all manner of disease. Listen, we got to cast the devil out. He's not going to go anywhere. He's not going to just walk away from you. You got to literally cast him out. Somebody to cast him out. A transgressor is one who unlawfully encroaches upon the territory of another one. Transgressors can, can continue their unlawful practices until they are found out that they are transgressing. And so my sisters and brothers, the Bible says, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as civil and gold, but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. This man had a serious problem. And I want to try to lift it. Many nights of lamenting. The nights were trouble, loneliness not a part of anything worthwhile. Nights of feeling like I am 
nobody. My sisters and brothers, even as we sit here tonight, loneliness is real. One woman said, I'm so lonely, it hurts. And, and, and I kind of ought to repeat this. At Hampton University, I used to do a, a, a seminar there every year, the last four or five years. And one year they had for a subject, preaching in silent pain. Wow. Serving in silent pain. Praying in silent pain. It was predicated on a man with a mega church. He gets up on a Sunday morning, takes his shower, uh, get dressed, goes to the front door of his house, and pull out a gun and blew his brain out. Suppose he could have called somebody. Suppose there would have been somebody who could give him some consolation while he was going through his excruciating pain. Let me ask you, church is not a safe place for secrets. And therefore we can't be transparent. We can't be transparent because transparent really means to see through. How many of us want people to see through us? We can't, we can't be transparent because we feel that people would judge us and define us. But like the man in the tomb, many of us are hurting. Many of us are going through some situations that we can't even talk about, let alone in the church. But sometimes we can't even talk about it in our family. And so, and so as, as we look at this story as it relates to what I'm talking about tonight, this man was rejected, neglected, deserted, and abandoned. He was an outcast and cast out. He felt forsaken. He was felt unloved. He was lonely. The enemy has a, had attacked his mind, his will, his emotion, and his body. Listen, there are so much mental illnesses in church. You know, Bishop Mason was different. I, I, I kept him one time. You know, Bishop Mason believed in spirits. I cast the devils out. So I, 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 I kept him, uh, carried him to his bedroom, and uh, maybe, maybe 15 or 20 minutes, I went back in there to check on, to see, see whether or not he was all right. And uh, I saw that he had put his shoes on a chair. So I, you know, I'm at 19 or 20, I took the shoes off the chair and put them on the floor. And maybe 20 minutes out there, I heard all this commotion going on in the room. I went back there, he said, boy, boy, where's my shoe? I said, Bishop Mason, I put your shoes on the floor. You know, Bishop Mason believed in casting out devils. Bishop Mason said, Lord, I rebuke this spirit of stupidity. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> so, so, so this man was troubled and harassed. He was, he, he, he was obsessed, oppressed, and bondage and bruised. This man could no longer handle the stress and the heartaches and the anxiety and an extreme discomfort. He felt an attitude of pain and defeat and rejected God from his life. It, it led him to a road that led him to an ever-increasing dissatisfaction, frustration, and emptiness. He became a hollowed soul, a zero with the edge rubbed off, a meaningless creature and the mass of meaningless people. No, no words could convey the loneliness and the despair and the brokenness he felt and self-pity. He had no self-worth. 
no self value. He was like a rubber doll stretched beyond its limit, lifeless, unwanted, useless. He developed layers of, of, of tough skin to, to bury his past and to conceal his pain. The emotions associated with this problem was the sense of failure, self-blame, not knowing the, 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 the outcome of his plight. His sense of alienation and isolation, he, he felt like he was nobody. How many of us deal with things that we can't talk about? How many of us deal with situations that is so horrific that if anybody else knew what it was, they would somehow try to judge us? What are the feelings of inadequacy? The changes in physical functions of appearance. He lost all of his human power and control. All of his influence was stripped away. All of his inner and outer walls of his life had cracked and crumble. His insanity enslaved him with, with, with chains of his own making. It, 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 it eroded his, his, his free will and ate away at his dignity. This man was like a tornado. He, 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 he was like a tornado gone loose. He, he, he was like a wild man in the insane silence. He was like a man escaped from the same asylum. And he was like a gangster on the prowl, like a ruined lion seeking his prey. His life was like a strike of lightning coming towards the earth. His life was like a dead, like cancer eating away into his heart. He was like a cesspool of corruption contaminated with every area of his life. The, the resentment, the hatred, the, the, the anger and the self-pity, the jealousy and the inferiority. This man had everything. He, 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 he somehow lost everything. His home, the fellowship of his family and his friend. He lost his decency as he run, ran around in the tomb naked. He lost his self-control and, and, and lived like a wild animal streaming, cutting himself and fraying the citizen. He was in a terrible situation and probably, possibly, he was taught morals and, and principles, but all of these was broken. He was a defeated man, looked down upon by even the lowest level of society, a hurting man. Abraham Lincoln once said, God must have loved the poor. He made so many of them. I believe that God must have loved the hurting because he made so many of us. Yes, there are, there are, there are, there are times in our life that, 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 that we can't even express it. You, you, you know, you know, uh, you don't have to worry about the woodpecker beating, making noise on a tree or whatever. You have to worry about the termites. <laughs> Jesus called Satan Beelzebub. The word Beelzebub means Lord of flies. Don't kill the flies, move the garbage. Y'all bear with me. This, this man lived in a, in a cemetery. It's all right to visit a cemetery, but not live. Some of y'all are dead on the inside and you're living. And you're living with past emotions, past performances. He lived in a cemetery. What, what type of mindset one must be to, to be content with everything around him? It is because he's dead on the inside. They are dead on the inside because they have no hope. What, what happens when you lose hope? 
What happens when you ain't got nothing to aspire to? What happens when you have nothing to look forward to? What happens when you have no expectations for your life? I'm, I'm just here with no hope. Hope thou in God. The Bible, the Bible says he had his dwelling among the tomb. And Luke says he, he wore no clothes, neither abide uh, in any house. The tomb was hewed out of the rocky caves of the mountain. My sisters and brothers, no man, the Bible said, could tame him. <laughs> No man could bind him, not with chains because his mind was already bound. He made his home where maggots and worms feasted on his body and carcasses. How can any man live surrounded himself with death and dying people? You better watch. You better watch who you who you who you live around. Don't even don't even be concerned about people who have everything negative to say about the church. Some people have nothing to talk about but what they used to do. But I want to tell you, my sisters and brothers, you better look at somebody and say you ain't perfect. I know, I know sometimes we, we, we want to imply that, but we're not. Look at somebody and say, God loves me, God loves me. With, the with the evidence. Now, I can't holler like I used to, but just bear along with me. God loves you with the goods on you. He, he, he got the goods on you and still you love. He love you. Why can't you love all the folk who are not perfect? Why can't you love all the people who got some problems? Why can't you love everybody who is struggling with habits and addiction? You need to learn how to love like Christ loves you. God so love the world. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Somebody say recovery. <laughs> say it again. The loss of places is not always about buildings and towns and cities. Places can also be emotional spaces. What about, what about the place of belonging and now I have been displaced? I, I attributed that to because of, uh, maybe 25 years ago I got involved with crack cocaine. And, and, and I want to share something here. I want to share something. Right there in Maywood, Illinois, I was at this receipt, retreat center. And uh, uh, I, I was going through this problem. I, I had lost everything like the man in the story. My morals, I was taught by my mother, I was taught by the church, but I ignored all of that. How many, how many people know we're free to make choices, but we're not free to choose the consequences? <laughs> and, and, the, the consequences just yeah. keep on piling up. And, 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 and when I lost everything, I was displaced, rightfully so. I was without position, title, and I was experiencing emotional loss. The loss of the loss of friends, the loss of jobs, I, I had no reference point uh, anymore. My, my primary purpose was gone. The walls was, was kicked down, the roots was pulled up, and all defenses was taken away from me. And as I stood naked 
among the wreckage of what had been. I was insecure. I, I was emotional, uh, bereft, alone, feeling guilty, not knowing where to turn, what to do. I even wondered about the ground on which I was standing because it looked like that too was giving in. I, I tried somehow to find a safe place to stand, even to begin resembling my But I want, to, I want to share with you this man. This man had a problem, and because of his problem, he had to make some kind of decision. I, I, I fasted for days and nights for God to restore me, and, and I know my wife and everybody out there said, you know, Bishop, you tell that story enough, but I need to tell it some more. Because... Because there are so many people going through stuff and we come to the church and it's just a massage. We come to the church with, with all of the things that are bothering us, we cover it up to, to disguise what we're going through. But it's time now for the church to really come to itself and say to God, Lord, get me out of this situation. Whatever, whatever. Whatever you're going through, he can get you through. Whatever, whatever you're experiencing, he can take you through a higher experience. You need now to lift up your heads and my eyes unto the hills from whence coming my help. Somebody ought to say, my help. My help comes from the Lord. When this man met Jesus, it was different from any other man he had ever met. Yes, sir. He was tired of what he was doing. I'm tired of being in this cemetery. I'm tired of living among the dead. I'm tired of being dead on the inside. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are, are passed away. And all, all things become new. I want to tell you, my sisters and brothers, I don't care where you are in life. You may be wondering about what you're going to do. Some people say, Bishop, how did you get involved in that? That's a wonderful uh, uh, question. But the real question is, how can I get out? Oh, how? Oh, how? How can I make amends? How can I? make a change how can I reach my goals how can I be the man that God wants me to be I want to tell you my sister I don't care what you're going through I can do all Christ, who strengthens me. Well, praise him. I'm closing here. I've been up too long. But the answer lies simply in the fact that from the beginning of time, he looked down on all of the human race and he saw my sins. He investigated my circumstances. He realized my guilt. He, he knew about my despair. He weighed my burdens. He witnessed our weakness. He observed our hopelessness. And my sisters and brothers, he made me a new man. 
Well, praise the Lord. Look at somebody say, I'm new. I wish. Oh, Lord. He came down. He surveyed my valley. He matches up my mountains. He calculated my losses. He comprehended my sorrow. He inventoried my mistakes. He counted my failures. He visualized my destiny. Oh, oh, oh Lord. Praise the Lord. He appraised my need. He felt my pain. He saw my tears he tasted my bitterness he faced my fears he confronted my battles he overcome all of my obstacles he's real he's real i've seen I seen the lightning flash. I heard the thunder roar. I've seen sin break dashing, shine to conquer my soul. But he promised. He promised. Oh, oh, he promised. I'll never. I walk with you through the valley. I walk with you through the fire, through the flood. He, he promised, the Bible said, and these signs. And these signs for follow them that believe in my name. In my name. You're going to cast the devil out. In my name. You're going to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In my name. That forget up in my name, you're going to have victory. Praise him. Listen. Listen. I want you to join with me and say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Get out of my house. Get out of my witness. The Lord rebuke you. I'm healed. Get out of my witness. I'm delivered. Get out of my. The Lord showed me before I got up, got up to preach. I'm going through a situation myself, but I've done my best. But listen, God wants to do something in this house tonight. Raise your hands again and say, be healed. Bishop Mason, and I want to share this. In 1957, I had enrolled in Sanks Junior College with no money, nothing. 
And I came on the campus with Dr. Mary to help her to get her things for the convocation. And she had those big trunks and suitcase. I still got back pains now to carry those big old suitcases <laughs> up in the Leela Mason building. I, I still got Bishop touching my back. <laughs> I still got back pain. So Bishop Mason walked out from his back door going to Mason Temple. I was 19. And W.L. Porter said, what's your name? I told him. He said, would you like to meet Bishop Mason? I said, yes. And I walked over where he was. A little man weighed about 100 pounds, a little bow tie on. And I reached out my hands to touch him. And he grabbed my hands and said, boy, the Lord bless you. And when he said that, I fell out on the ground and began to speak in tongues. God sent back those days. God sent, sent the days for that anointing. We're coming to our midst and where we could where we could just claim healing for our family, for our children, for our grandchildren, for our church and for our community. Lord heal me. I'm going through I'm, I'm going through. And one more thing before I sit down, I I keep telling you, excuse me, but I just feel something miraculous is getting ready to happen now. The Lord healed me of colon cancer. Yes, my God. I, the Lord healed me from using drugs. Oh my shit, my God, I see. The Lord has blessed my family. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Raise your hands and just thank him. Give him praise. All over the sanctuary, give him praise. Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! Pour out your spirit! Holy Ghost! Give us a double anointing! Holy Ghost! Woman, you're healed! Man, you're made free! God give you peace and tranquility! The Holy Ghost! This other miracle. <laughs> Look at somebody say, You're looking at a miracle. <laughs> you may not believe it, but God wants to give you a miracle tonight. <laughs> somebody help me. Help me come down here. Help me. I want. I want to be a blessing to you. Bishop Mason preached in our convocation in New Haven, Connecticut. I picked him up from LaGuardia Airport, brought him to the church. And when he got to the church, Bishop O.T. Jones, Bishop Kelly, F.T. Washington, 
D.A. Burton, all of them was at the church. And when Bishop Brewer introduced him, people clapped and shouted. And there was a lady in the back of the church. Let me demonstrate this. There was a lady in the back of the church bent over and it was about 200 or 300 people at the church that night and Bishop Mason saw this lady. He said, woman, walk down towards the altar. And she was bent over like this. It was said that she had a tumor a garter that was on her neck that had caused her to be bent over and she was bent all the way over and her stomach was protruding out from her body. And this lady, Bishop Mason was saying, be healed. Somebody said, be healed. She, she started walking. She started walking towards the altar. How many people know the word altar? Yeah. Means alteration. Yeah. All of us need a little repair. We, all of us need a little stitches. All, all of us need refreshing. She kept on. She kept on walking. And as she was walking, she started lifting her head. She started, she, uh, she, she lifted her and, and she took the next steps and she, she went down and, and she, she took another step. And head lifted up this big, this big tumor was blending back into her body. And as she was walking, the tumor was going back, 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 back into her body. She, she kept on walking. And as soon as she got to the altar, she was standing up straight. The tumor had blended back into her body. She was completely made whole. Oh, praise the Lord. I want everyone to just start to walk and walk around, just walk around and watch God heal you. Just, just go on and just, oh, such a, oh, such a, oh, just go on and. Miracles in this place. Miracles. God is about to give you a miracle. He's going to make you going to get a miracle. You're going to, a miracle. God, God is, oh, so, oh, God, God give you a miracle. Listen, there it is. Miracles. Oh, oh. Oh, praise him. Oh, praise him. Oh, praise him. Oh, praise him. Be healed. Jesus' name, God.
woman be healed. Be healed in Jesus. One moment. Brother Bishop, I kind of feel like Joshua. Do you know what happened there? Joshua sees a man. He didn't know the man was an angel. Walked up to the man and said, they were fighting the battle of Jericho. The enemy was about to prevail. And Joshua said, who are you? And whose size are you on? The man said, I didn't come to take sides. I came to take over. <laughs> Is there anybody here who the Lord not take sides, but said, take over? Take over! I'm tired of me just... that God is getting ready to bless you with a financial blessing Thank you, Jesus. that you don't know anything about. Thank you, Jesus. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I need to say this to you. I was preaching at my Marvin Winans church. Yes. 
And I asked, how many people in here got court cases pending? I want you to come this way. How many people in here got court case pending? Come this way. Come this way. All your people who got court cases pending. have not been resolved. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you don't believe it, call Marvin Wynum. He'll tell you what I'm telling you. I said, now, if God resolve this issue and you get your money, would you pay tithes to the church? And they said, yes. Maybe a month later, there was two people who said yes. Marvin called me and said, Bishop, are you standing or sitting? I said, I'm standing. He said, sit down. <laughs> he said, you know, when you preached at the church, you was talking about God giving people resolution to a court case. And I kind of hesitated. He said, Negro, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Don't be slow on this. So he said, the man that you prophesied just left my office predicated on what you said. I said, what did I say? He said, you said that they should pay their tithing and give $30,000 to the pastor for the church. He said, that man just left my office and gave me $30,000. Don't. Now this is this is a true story. I don't listen. I don't believe in this prosperity thing like some of y'all do. I believe if you pay your tithes and be loyal to God, God will open the windows of heaven and pull you out blessings that you would not have room enough. Bishop, please forgive me, but the last time you were here, you made that same clarion call, and several people came up. One of them was a member of this pastor's church. And when you told her about God was going to sell that case and how much money she can get, that day she got home and she called me and told me, Bishop McClellan, when I got home, there was a letter in my mail that my case had been settled and it was a whole lot of money. I know it was the Lord, that statement, but I also know this was the Lord. When that man got his check and gave Marvin $30,000, Marvin called me and said, Bishop, do you have any money? I said, man, what are you talking about? I got a little money. He said, well, I got a big offering for you. Can you stop what you're doing? I said, no. No. I've been fasting today, and I'm praying for the sick at my church. I can't come down there. <laughs> I said, and... and and somebody around me said, Bishop, are you crazy? <laughs> but I knew if God said it, he's going to do it. Amen. I'm telling y'all this. When you get your money, don't you act crazy. Amen. That you forgot it. Amen. You got witnesses in here that say, here's what I'm saying. Amen. You got the chief attorney for the church of God of Christ. He's standing right there. And you got a chief justice is right there. He said, say, amen. amen. Let me ask you this. Did y'all hear these testimonies? We did. Okay, sure. right, let's just let me say that. All I want to know that you heard it. I'm getting ready to say something to you. You're getting ready to receive your money. How many of y'all can lease that uh, that that hundreds and hundreds of thousands? How many people get need it right now? Yes. 
And then, and then when you get that money, give some of it to mama. Put it in her hand, she can I know her, she, 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 she said, give, give her some of it. The first lady of our church. Y'all better listen to me and my old man now. I mean, I ain't, I ain't trying to do nothing but try to preach. <laughs> and sometimes I'm not good at that right now, but I used to be. <laughs> Say amen. amen. So what I want you to do, I want everybody in this room to sacrifice $33. Amen. Look at somebody and say, everybody. everybody. $33. $33. Get, get me a pen and put it right there. I'm going to give $35. I want, I want everybody in here just give me $33. Don't y'all sit down. Get that money out now. Where's the usher? Bring y'all need a bigger listen, Bishop. Don't pass this thing out no more like this. Get a get a big container. Say amen. Get a get a big one about as big as the altar there. Because you're looking for big blessings. Say amen. I want y'all right now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm gonna put one there. This ain't for me. This is for your jurisdiction or whatever the bishop wants to do it with. Bring that money down and put it in the, in the container there. Yes, just, just bring the money down. Huh? Can I sit here just a moment? Let me just sit here a moment. Y'all bear along with this old man. Just bring it here. Bring it. I want everybody to just bring it. Don't sit down on me now. Members, bring that $33 down here. Just bring it. Just bring it down there. Just get out of your seat just like I prayed for you. Be, have the same enthusiasm. Just, just bring it. God bless you. Thank you for joining us in our 76th annual Ministers and Workers Meeting where our Bishop C.H. McCullough is the prelate and the general board member. Good evening and God bless you. Thank you for joining us in our 76th annual Ministers and Workers Meeting, where our Bishop C.H. McClellan is the prelate and the general board member. We've come to that time in the service where it is time to offer up our sacrificial gifts. Those of you that are joining us online, you have the opportunity to participate in this giving by giving via Givelify. You can find us on Givelify by searching Wisconsin Northwest Jurisdiction, and on the landing page, you will see our Bishop C.H. McClellan. Go ahead and select your gift, select the envelope, and we thank you for your continuous support of the jurisdiction and of the Lord's Church. We continuously pray that God continues to increase you in your sacrificial giving. You don't want to miss our weeknight services. On Wednesday evening, we'll be hearing from our very own Bishop Roger Jones, the Vice Chairman of the Board of Bishops. On Thursday night, we'll hear from Milwaukee's own Bishop O.C. Tatum, the Administrative Assistant for Wisconsin Northwest Jurisdiction. And on Friday, we'll be hearing from our sainted mother, Supervisor Grace Davis Harris, as she provides an inspiring and anointed word. On Saturday, the youth are convening at El Bethel Church of God in Christ on 5401 West Good Hope Road. That event begins at 12 noon. You come and join us at that event as the young people go forth in the Lord. And official day, the high point of our service, that will be held Sunday, March 24th, 6 p.m. at Mason Temple Church of God in Christ, 6098 North 35th Street. Come on out and hear the official day message from our Bishop C.H. McClellan, the Prelate and General Board member. We look forward to seeing you in the services, and may God continuously bless you. And again, thank you in this time of giving. We appreciate every gift that has been sown. Uh, again, you can give via Givelify. You can find us on Givelify by searching Wisconsin Northwest Jurisdiction. Thank you, and God bless you.